All right, hello, welcome back. First of all, let me start off by saying um, I'm so proud of you guys, the ones that have been regularly turning in your assignments and just doing your work. Um, you're really making good habits for your future selves. This time right now is really letting you practice what it would be like if you were in college and you had online classes and just a new level of responsibility. So I just wanted to throw that out there and say, I see you, you're doing great, and I'm proud of you. Okay, area of triangles. So again, basic stuff we need to review before we get into surface area, um, which is three-dimensional shapes. So let's start with triangles, just two-dimensional. So I gave you the formula right here. It's very similar to a rectangle. So you see you're taking your base and your height and you're multiplying them, which would be the area formula of a rectangle. But these are triangles, so the area is half of the area of a rectangle. So if you think about it, a rectangle is basically made up of two triangles. So we need one half of a rectangle to get a triangle. So that's where the formula comes from, one half base. We're going to make pink. Remember the base and the height are always perpendicular. So our bases will be pink, our height will be yellow, just like before. So remember perpendicular, you will see the 90 degree angle, the little corner, the base and the height need to make that 90 degree angle in order to be the base and the height. So there will be extra numbers on some of these triangles. Um, you need to pick the two numbers, the two segments that are perpendicular and that will identify your base and your height. All right, so same format. I'll do the odds, you'll do the evens. The odds and the evens are closely related. So this one is pretty similar to that one and so on. All right, we're gonna find the area of the triangle below, triangles, round answers to the nearest hundred. So again, 100 has two zeros, so you can think of that as two decimal places. So we're going to round it to the nearest hundred. All right, number one, what kind of triangle is this? I see two congruent tick marks. Yes, that is isosceles. Isosceles triangles have two congruent sides. And then they drew in the height right here. So this is telling you how tall the triangle is. So 16 is going to be our height. And it is perpendicular. There's our right angle we're looking for to the base. So the entire base is 27. So keep in mind the base is not always on the bottom. I know it's set as this name is base. It seems like it should be on the bottom, but like remember on number four with this parallelogram, the height was perpendicular to this side. So we're calling that the base since we see that the height is perpendicular to that side. So the 19 was the base on this one, which is technically not on the bottom, it's on the top of the parallelogram. So since it's parallelogram, both of these would be considered the base. So if our right angle was down here, that would be the base. I'm just trying to say it doesn't always have to be on the bottom. That's going to be coming in handy whenever we go to do like surface area and things like that. All right, so we have a triangle. We need to remember the triangle formula is one half the base times the height. So basically, do base times height and then divide it by two. So we said our area is going to be half of 27 times 16. So I just said you have to multiply the base and the height. You, I mean, it's multiplication. You could find half of 16 and multiply that by 27. Whatever floats your boat. So I. We could do 27 times 16, 
and then divide it by 2 to get 216. Um, some people like to do mental math. They'll do half of 16 is 8, so at least 27 times 8. So however you want to multiply the numbers together, just make sure you do all three of them at one point. So we're going to do 216, no decimals here. And practice your units. This is centimeters squared because we just found the area. So it's all the space inside of the triangle. So it's squared centimeters. All right, similar for number two. Identify the base and height. It's not too hard because there's literally only two numbers there. <laughs> and solve for the area. All right, number three. Three and four look kind of different because we have all these dotted lines and they're outside the triangle. So we're looking for our right angle, which is right here. So I know that the height is connected to that. The height is always perpendicular to the base. So this 14 is telling us that the triangle is that tall. So our triangle is 14 inches tall, the height of the triangle. And they just drew these dotted lines out here for you to see that it is perpendicular to the base. The base is going to be the number that is actually on the triangle. So we want to pick the segment or the number that represents the base. We know that it is the base because of this right angle and these dotted lines. And they just drew these dotted lines out to show that the height would be perpendicular to the base if the base existed right there. But it doesn't, so we're just going to use the segment 29.5 as our base. It is the actual piece of the triangle. So again, it's a triangle, so you have to remember your formula, one half base times height. So we need to do half of 29.5 times 14. And I like to use parentheses to represent multiplication. I'm just kind of grouping off the numbers. You can use whatever symbols you prefer for multiplication. I don't know, for some reason I just like parentheses. So 29.5 times 14, and then divide that by two. So we're going to get 206.5 inches squared. <clears throat> All right, five and six, there's something we need to do before we can do the area formula. So, we have another isosceles triangle on number 5. We know it's isosceles because 30 centimeters, 30 centimeters, there's two congruent sides. That means the base is 26, if you remember learning about isosceles triangles. Um, the base is the side that's different than the other two, the legs. So with this, we can actually draw in the height. Since it's isosceles, if we're going from the vertex angle, the very top, and drawing in a height, what do you think that would do to this bottom side? We drew in a height at 90 degrees. We're trying to figure out what the height is. So we just made a right triangle, well actually two right triangles to kind of cut this isosceles into two right triangles. We know that that's a right angle because the height has to be perpendicular to the base. So if we just kind of zoom in on that right triangle, we just drew in the height. We know that this slanty side it's just like this slanty side, 30, that is the hypotenuse, it's across from the right angle. What do you think this little piece would be? The base was 26. So 
So if we're just looking at this much of it, any guesses? Any guesses? 13. How did we get 13? Well, if we drew in the height, it basically bisected the base in half. So we have 13 over here and 13 over there. 13 plus 13 is 26. So now we kind of figured out almost all the pieces of the right triangle. How can we figure out the height? What's our favorite theorem to use with right triangle? Pythagorean theorem. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Throwback, you remember that? So now we're using the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the height. Got to be careful with identifying a, b, and c. Just like always, c has to be the hypotenuse. So we're going to replace c with 30. 30 is the hypotenuse. So slanty, long side. That's across from the 90 degree angle. So we're going to have 30 squared equals h squared plus 13 squared. Solving for the height of the triangle before we can find the area of the triangle. 30 squared is going to be 900 equals h squared plus 13 squared is 169. Solve for h. Let's subtract that over. 900 minus 169 will be 731. That equals h squared. We just want regular h. We need to get rid of that square by square rooting. The square root of 731 is, we're rounding to the nearest hundredth, so we're trying to figure out is that 0 0.03 or 0 0.04? Yeah, it'll be 0 0.04 because that's 7. That 7 rounds the 3 up to a 4. So our height, just the height of the triangle is 27.04 centimeters. All right, funsies. We just used the Pythagorean theorem to find the height. So now that we have the height, let's let's um find the area. So we just Solve for the height, we got 27.04. And going back to the original triangle, the height is perpendicular to the base. The base is this entire side. So we need to use 26 for the base. Area is going to equal one half of 27.04 times 26. And you could, if you have a calculator like this, just type that whole thing in. 0.5 times 27.04 times 26. 351.52. Alright, cool, 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 cool. So number six is kind of similar, but it's not an isosceles triangle. They already have it as a right triangle, and you do need to solve for h. So figure out the height by using the Pythagorean theorem like we did right here, and then solve for the area. <clears throat> so you don't have to cut the seven in half because it's not isosceles. You don't have to do what we did right here. You only do that for isosceles. This is already a right triangle. Okay, one through six is basically like just giving you a triangle. You need to identify the height and the base on the area. Number seven and eight is kind of the opposite. So they give you the area and either the height or the base, and you're solving for whatever is missing. So number seven, the area of a triangle 
So area of a triangle, I should already be writing down that formula. Area of a triangle is half the base times the height is 250. So they just told us the A is going to be replaced with 250. What is the height of the triangle if its base is 50 inches? So they just told us that B will be replaced with 50. And we need to solve for H. So I'm going to take out the letters that they gave us numbers for and replace them. A is 250. We know the area equals one half. The base, they told us, is 50 times the height, which is what we are trying to solve for. Sorry, I'm trying to get my lighting right. Hopefully the audio on this video was a lot better than the last one. I moved some things around and um, I'll watch it back, I guess, and see if it was any better. But, okay, so this is our setup. They told us the area is 250, the height is 50, and we know it's a triangle, so we need to make sure we have a one-half in there. So you can go ahead and solve for H, just like you know how. You could either multiply the 2 over to get rid of that one-half, and then divide off the 50, or you could go ahead and simplify half of 50. So we have 250 over here equals half of 50 is 25 H. And now to solve for H, get H by itself, we will divide off the 25. So H would be 10 inches. So using the area formula to solve for a missing side. All right, that is it for this lesson. Um, go ahead and complete the evens. And today is Tuesday, but I'm posting it. I'll still decide on when it's due, maybe on Thursday by four. Wait, no, today's Wednesday, right? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm like, I'm losing all tr track of time and everything yeah today's Wednesday so we're gonna make this due on Friday by four Thursday by midnight for extra credit again I'm so proud of you if you are on track and you are really just taking the time to form these good habits I know these are really strange and different times and experiences for you guys and I just want to say that you're doing great so Hit me up if you have any questions, and I will see you soon. Bye. Oh, yeah, Mother's Day is Sunday. Do something for your mom. Okay, cool.